So this is the club that I kind of had the idea about where I was going to try and kind of, you know, frame how I was going to frame the way I was going to DJ at Tap East for our night called the Tapped. So the whole idea behind selling their matures, it was that it was this bar in Dusseldorf, right, where they kind of, you know, and again, Germany probably are more... Uh, are more akin to this sort of like you know way of doing things because they just get they just get club culture probably a lot better than other people in other countries right but the whole idea behind selling their matures was that you had this nightclub in Dusseldorf or this bar this kind of lounge bar in Dusseldorf where they invited locals and friends and family to come and play residents only night for the most part for the you know they had guests on there and it was a real kind of eclectic mix of music like nothing really there was no real rhyme or reason why you would play like an opera song like, you know, at, at peak hours of the night, and people will be standing up on top of the bar, hooting and clapping and, you know, making noise. It didn't really make any sense why this was working, but it was working at the time, right? And this really inspired me how I went to craft the way I wanted to play music because I always thought of it in a sense of, um, this is a feature on Resident Advisor I'm kind of scrolling through here on screen, but it kind of, and then you can see like, they you know, they've got all these kind of like really hipster people playing at this bar, really amazing kind of, you know, um, esoteric kind of DJs and then you've got local dice, right? I love that kind of marriage, right? And my idea behind the DJing playlist of playing a tapis was that I wanted to, I wanted it, I kind of imagined what I'd like if I'd went out on a Friday night, right? Because I don't know, I'm I'm somebody that's like, um, I'm not against a bit of spontaneity. I don't mind like, you know, letting the night take me where it wants to take me. So I'd imagine meeting up some friends after I finished my shift in H&M or something, right? Or whatever shop I was working in. And then coming down, me and my friend that's working in, I don't know, um, a, sh a shop downstairs, whatever, maybe or John Lewis. And then saying, oh, let's grab a beer and then we're going to go to Dawson later, right? So we go, okay, let's just get a beer here at this craft beer place, right? And you walk into Tapis and you hear this great music playing in the background. And you're like, oh, this is quite cool, actually. And once you finish your first pint and you've mates in the toilet and you pops back out again and another good song comes on and you come back to the table and he's like, you know what? Should we just stay and get another one? And all of a sudden you're like, yeah, why not? Because you both live in East London, right? You both live around like the Stratford area. What's the point of going away to Dawson and coming back again, um, out out again here to this um, East? You might as well just stay there. So it's the idea of like catching people's attention whilst they're in a whilst they came somewhere they didn't think they were going to come to. Because obviously I'm again understanding that being at an open mic level as a DJ, not there's not necessarily people going to come out specifically to see me play. Right, I'm not at that level yet. I don't have a following or anything. People are just going to come to the places that I play at, and if I'm playing there at that time and I do a good job, they're going to stay. And if I if they come if they come back another time and I happen to be there again, they're going to say, "Oh, this guy's good." Right, that's where it's going to go from. But it's not going to be like, "Oh wow, I can see I was playing somewhere." No one gives a shit. But what I have in my at my dis at my disposal is opportunity to play music in front of people right in this kind of little space and kind of really change their perception of what a dj is and what i can do my terms of musical taste and that's what has been probably the most entertaining part about playing at tapis at the, at the moment you can see pictures of the sound amateurs like you know just how loungy and relaxed it is people just playing good music this feature is amazing i recommend you check it out um it really kind of opened my eyes in terms of like what it meant to have like maybe a club night or a night in general because obviously coming from the alibi sense of the word or from the alibi scene where it was mostly about you know um it was mostly about you know cultivating a sound maybe promoting a kind of sound aesthetic you wanted to promote out there but also mainly um about you know making sure you had enough people in the in the room to justify the night to pay the djs and to get paid at the end of the night right that was kind of the onus of it there was obviously an opportunity to kind of get people you know new interesting djs in there but most of it was making sure that you covered your nut and you weren't like paying out of pocket for people but this is another way right where you're kind of it's like a bit of a longer burn slower burn you don't get the hype of like okay we're gonna book ricardo Vera lobos first week to play at tap east you have to kind of like hope that you know me and natalia back to back can kind of hold that place down hold it together and because of course like she has pressure on her end because she starts earlier than i do at five which is again probably the peak time people are coming out so you have to hold them there and then i also have the responsibility when she passed the baton to me at seven to make sure that that they don't leave as soon as she leaves right oh this guy's playing now he's shit we hate him do you know what i mean it's that kind of really weird in between gap and i'm seeing a lot of difference i've seen like even in the beginning i even noticed when we were first djing um at tap east whenever i took over from natalia from seven to eight it kind of dropped off. People just like leave straight away, right? Because, you know, generally the music will stop. I might change the tempo and stuff, whatever. Maybe they don't like what I play, whatever it may be, and they'll leave, right? But then, um, and then that also, the time when the, 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 the request increased. But another time now, I've seen people stay a little longer. I've seen people leave maybe at 10 
or sometimes 11 sometimes now i've seen people hang around it's not just me playing until 11 and it slowly but surely got better to the point now i hardly get any requests people just come up to me for the most part and just say oh yeah i like that song thanks for playing this oh that's amazing I, I like that you play this thing and one of the best kind of compliments i got was the other week actually um we both kind of got the same compliment from this guy who basically said um that he likes when we play because essentially like we play like you know the general stuff like you know your mum and dad would probably like or you know some general kind of like you know um great it's rolling stones greatest hits magazines kind of songs right but then i also sprinkle in the stuff that i like right i also play some anderson pack i might play some of the internet i might play i don't know a random fucking techno track that i like that kind of fits really well in that kind of environment just really mixing it up and he kind of really appreciate it and again this is something that as a dj you kind of do yourself and you hope people just like it but you don't you don't really think they understand the reasoning behind it but then he kind of articulated it really well so that's been a really interesting kind of like experience um and i saw all this to say all this blabbering to say this about this club night is because now over time so that, that happened on friday then i did it on, on saturday for my night labertees which happened at um the heath cotton star that was fucking awesome as well to play there um um, great because again it's like a you know it's a chain branch of pubs or bars that they own around london they also own the star of bethnal the hackney something was it whatever that one's called they got loads of those kind of star places they've got latent star that was a good night because of course it's you know again it attracts probably a, a bit more of a younger clientele a bit more of a cooler clientele and that kind of part of, of latent stone but also it was good because you know that place has changed management a few times um, in terms of bar managers who kind of, you know, have a, a say in who plays sometimes, who they like, who they want to promote, blah, blah, blah. But oh, oh, across those kind of changes over a space of a year now, it's been that I've kind of been running at night. They've consistently kept me on. They consistently wanted me to be a part of the bar. They've liked what I played. Um, they just liked everything that I do, right? And I've consistently been getting good um, reports and remarks from them. And it's nice because this last Saturday, I just passed one of the bartenders that, that works there, one of the girls that works there. It's really nice. Um, it was her birthday. And she was really happy that I was one playing there. She invited some of her friends to come down. Um, to have a bit of a song and a dance and yeah it was really good it was really good man in the end so much so there was like you know they were really happy that I was playing along for her birthday and she had a good time and it was amazing just to get that kind of response you know and again um this kind of DJing luck has been something that I've always been interested to do, something I've always liked to do as a hobby, something that I've kind of always felt like I had a bit of a voice, I had something different to say, something different to um, to kind of um, showcase right behind the booth. I always find it interesting. I always find it cool that I would blow people's minds, right, for the most part with the stuff that I play because looking at me, they'd expect one thing and then I'd play another thing. At first, it was something that kind of annoyed me, but then I kind of thought it was a bit of my, it was my superpower, the ability to kind of traverse these different worlds and kind of be able to meld and blend them into one DJ set. And this has been something that I've been really happy and pleased about I've been able to do. Um, the only challenge I've been able to have kind of face is that I'm trying to illustrate somehow how I can capture what I play in a nightclub on an online mix, right? I've not been kind of be able to transcend that so far for the most part, but it's something that I kind of need to kind of curate and get better. Um, it might have to be something that I kind of do in the same sense of how the Fabric Live mix CDs were. Remember those, right? where they were kind of usually like a, a way of the DJ kind of showcasing what really works for them when they play at Fabric, like their ultimate kind of like, you know, party um, mixtape. That might be a way to do it instead of just recording a set that I do in a nightclub because it doesn't really have any context. I don't know. That was something to work with it. But off the back of that good response, um, one of the former managers of the Heath Cotton Star reached out to me the other week and asked me to play at the Free Compasses in Dawson. Which again is an interesting way to kind of you know um, punctuate the story of my whole journey through you know um, being one of the kind of main cool guys in Dawson and hanging around that scene to kind of falling out of favour due to my own kind of inability to adapt and also due to kind of other things outside of my control and then kind of like deciding I wanted to DJ in Stratford and Leytonstone in this area only which is you know at the time that I was doing it three or four years ago no one was DJing there was no real bars I needed to DJ at because you know there's no equipment to do it you have to bring all your own stuff I didn't have my own stuff. So it wasn't really set up for it, but I kind of persevered, kept sending fucking email after email after email, getting no response from people. Um, suddenly kind of got this opportunity and now it all comes back around full circle and I'm back DJing now at Dawson, um, which is fucking weird and blew me the fuck away. But all this to say, um, I guess, because I've, I've said this a few times to myself and other people, sometimes I don't follow my own advice, but sometimes I do, you know, we're, net, we're, we're humans in that regard. The key to all this, I think, is trying to, do the best job that you can do regardless of opportunity you get given, right? Regardless of how shitty it may be, regardless of how small and insignificant it may be, no matter how nominal the fee is, do your best, right? Bring your best. 
do your best because I really believe like how you do one thing is how you do everything. I honestly believe that. You know, sometimes when you're in a bit of a predicament and you're a bit stressed out and you're feeling a little bit um what do you call it um how do you just say you just feeling you know you just feeling like you can't really get started. Sometimes you might do this thing. I know I do sometimes. You start cleaning the house. You start cleaning the kitchen. You start cleaning some plates. You start organizing your wardrobe. You start organizing your bookshelf, right? You do these weird little things, right? These little rituals that you do. Why do you do that? It's, so it's your way. It's a kind of like um, unconscious way of your mind trying to get some things in order in order to allow you to think. Because you're like, okay, cool. If I can get my bookshelf in order, then it's going to allow me to think better because that bookshelf is like a, rep- is like a living reputation of how muddled or how fucked up or how like confused my brain is at the moment. But if I can get that sorted, everything else will work out the same way. And that's how I think it is to do jobs in general, right? I think the way you approach that one tiny thing that you're doing, if you've been asked just to kind of like, I don't know, stand at the fucking door, how you approach the standing at the door is going to affect everything else that you do coming back to it. Because if you think, oh, standing at the door is beneath me, I shouldn't be doing this, I'm hiding this, what should I be doing, waste of time, that is obviously going to permeate other things that you end up doing in the end. It's just something that I truly believe in. I don't, it's kind of like um, um, working out, having a good diet. One can't offset the other. You can't outwork a bad diet, right? You can't like, you know, you can't outwork a bad work ethic in general. You have to be able to have that work ethic on all planes. And the better way to do it, I think, is to start at the lowest plane. When, you, when, when I'm playing um, places that are charging you, um, that are giving you 50 pounds um, to play somewhere, right? The way that I approach that, the fact that I sit down the whole week and research place and research the place I'm playing at, watch video clips uploaded onto Instagram of people that have been there, listen to the kind of stuff people like there, look at the nights that people have been throwing there previously, get a vibe of what's going on there. Maybe you go in there at the bar incognito and hope no one recognizes me so I can just, or not recognize me, but like the bar manager recognizes me just to get a feel of what people are playing in there. I'll do all these things and prepare a playlist just for like a £50 fee that is going to then um, be the same work ethic that I have when I eventually go and play in a really famous nightclub somewhere or I go and tour or whatever it may be, right? That is going to be the same level of preparation. I'm not going to just wing it because I've been doing, because that same um, work ethic has allowed me these opportunities. Why would I then suddenly stop? But then if you start doing, if you start practicing bad habits from the, from the beginning, it's very hard to kind of turn it around. And, you know, and obviously it helps, you know, to be like a person that people like to be around, right? I generally, I'm quite hospitable i kind of do go into this kind of with a bit more professional attitude more so than i might have done in the past when i was hanging around dawson and stuff i was a bit more of a party boy a bit more of a you know trying to be a man about town which is again purposely done right i was purposely trying to be like you know um, a mainstay in the scene i wanted people to know that i'm the one i'm one of the pe- people behind this night i'm one of the people that does this right that was kind of my image so m- mostly that was an image thing right it wasn't necessarily a skill thing right so you're kind of selling yourself by being crazy and being outlandish so which kind of you know is good because you know at that time everyone else is being crazy and outlandish and is drunk and drugged up so it fits but in this environment where i'm kind of providing a service i'm kind of coming in like an independent contractor and doing a job you have to be quite professional about it right you can't be a dick yeah you, know? you have to kind of you know treat the space you're working in with respect and the people that work there respect and i think that's kind of again aided me and helped me again in this kind of essence where people are kind of reaching out to me with email saying oh actually we like you as a person right and we want to get you back in again because they, they they just know i'm not going to be in trouble i'm not that demanding you know I, I come in i do my job and i kind of leave right i don't overstay my welcome like just kind of little tiny things that i've kind of done that i've kind of understood as time has kind of progressed and yeah and i'm just happy with how it's kind of unfolded out again it's not it's not that i was waiting for these positive re- reaffirmations i wasn't waiting for um to be proven right with my approach but i did believe that you know I did believe that in order for me to kind of achieve my goals and get where I need to get to the DJing thing, that I kind of need to do things differently. I kind of didn't need to kind of follow the general path that's been laid out by everyone else, what everyone else is kind of doing now, where it's just consistently, you know, everyone's kind of doing the same routine, doing club nights around Dawson, getting an online radio show on fucking NTS or all those kind of places, uh, doing a boiler room. Like there's kind of paths that people always do, right? That kind of, the you know, or um, DJing during fashion week, doing a launch part, doing a store launch, launch event a capsule launch event djing in the corner these kind of things they think that is going to be the route to get them a look in the industry but in my opinion doing i want to do it the kind of like actual dj way it's a bit more harder work it's a bit more grassroots you have to kind of get involved in the mud you have to go and dj at really kind of like unknown places where no one's going to be at where you're going to be playing for a crowd of five people and shit if that right for the most part um with a sound system that kind of just about works right you're going to be playing at that sort of lower level 
and you're going to be eating shit for a long, 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 long time until you get to where you want to get to. It's a longer journey, but the fruits of it, I think, are far more worthwhile. Um, for me personally, again, it's just what depends what you want. If you want to be the kind of cool gal or guy around town, then there is something that you have. There is there are things you have to do, and you know we all know these people who who, who are amazing on social media, kind of get all the kind of amazing brand deals, do the kind of store launch events. There, that's a particular kind of breed that you kind of and actions. Your actions need to match up to that kind of ambition, right? You need to be around places. You need to be buying outfits. You need to be kind of putting yourself front and center, all things, making sure everything's getting captured and recorded. Like there's a certain thing that have to be done. And that's just something I wasn't really, um, what I didn't want to do for myself. That wasn't my goal. Um, again, if you want to do that thing, there are other uncles to follow, but I think if you want to do the other thing and you want to be, you know, a DJ that's kind of, cause I want to be doing this when I'm in my sixties and seventies, man, just playing music for people, right. In different places, different spaces. That's just amazing. Cause it, it allows you to travel the world, see new things. Like I just want to be doing this as like, just as fun. And if you get paid for it, it's fucking awesome. Right. So if you want to be doing this in your, you know, in your latter years, in new and interesting places, you want to be rubbing shoulders with some of the most important or influential DJs and producers of our time, being able to play in some of the best designed spaces that ever existed, working with great sound engineers, with great promoters, with better with great bar managers there's a way to do it that really involves a lot of slow burn a lot of kind of grafting at the bottom you're scraping away and then eventually you'll get to where you need to get to but it takes a lot of kind of like humility i think maybe swallowing your ego a lot of patience and just a lot maybe a lot of foresight because like i said like living in london there is a kind of it seems like there is a kind of a bit of a blueprint that everyone kind of follows um which is a bit of annoying because everyone kind of does the same thing but for the most part i think following that blueprint you're just going to end up in a crowd full of people, you know, like just everyone's kind of doing the same thing. That kind of like, you know, cool hipster DJ person exists everywhere and they're very good at it. It's not something I kind of want to do. And again, it's just too much traffic there. I think there's less traffic on the other side because obviously it's a bit more of a longer journey and requires a lot more patience. But in the end, I think it's worthwhile because now look, right, it's all come back full circle, right? I got kind of like, quote unquote, kicked out of the Dawson scene, which I didn't really because I left. But imagine on paper, people oh, he's not, you know, whatever around anymore. What people want to say, but now I'm kind of being invited back in, like, you know, at, as and I'm getting paid to come back in, which is fucking awesome, right? Which is the best thing possible in this situation. So yeah, happy about that. Happy has kind of happened full circle. Um, I haven't got a, a name for the night yet. What I want to do, I think I might just have it just hands on black man presents or just you know just have it as my name as free compasses. I'm not gonna call it a night anymore. Probably might change up a little bit. Um, but I'm playing on the first of February from nine till twelve thirty at the free compasses in Dawson and then the the February the eighth as well. So back to back um weekends. Um the first of February at the uh, at the free compasses in Dawson and the eighth of February at the free compasses in Dawson. So check that out. Um listings are gonna be on my website at xnozingo.com under DJ gigs you'll see all the listings on there and hopefully a flyer will be coming up in the next couple of weeks or next couple of days or so. Just decide exactly where I wanna how I want to position it. But yeah, I'm happy about that man. It's fucking awesome how things have all come back around full circle on that regard 